All right. Um, and so one more time, I'm going to paste into the chat. I uh, see a couple of people have popped on. That is the sign-in form for today. Please do it uh, sooner rather than later because there's a, a goodie at the end that you're going to get that you were going to be using actually as part of today's training. Um, so just some quick announcements before we get started. Uh, all of the Quizlets for all intents and purposes are completed. I've got some um, folks that need to do some adjustments, but uh, we've got all 345 of those Quizlets completed. As of Tuesday, at least, I haven't gone in to see if more have been done. 260 of the 345 forms quizzes are completed. Uh, there are some straggler resources and I put some things in the class stream yesterday because of the fact that there was a bit of confusion and this is on me. Um, I should have said when you selected your stories at the very start to make sure that you went through and selected the things that you intend to do um, for those stories, whether it was just the Quizlets or the Quizlets, the forms and the Wakelets. So we're sort of um, gonna be um, sending out a couple more reminders this week. Sorry if that's uh, too much, but I just wanna make sure that everybody has staked their claim for the things that they want to create so that by end of week, um, I can designate or signify in the resource tracker uh, which resources remain open. Um, there's a handful of folks that are very interested in creating more and I super, super appreciate that. Um, and so I just, I want to make it clear what is actually fair game for folks to grab and create more resources. Um, we also have a reviewer opportunity. I mentioned this during the trainings uh, last week, uh, or two weeks ago, excuse me. Um, we have received a grant from uh, Creative Commons, which is awesome because they, as we said in um, one of the earlier webinars, are really the stewards of um, open licensing. <laughs> And Creative Commons uh, has a community grant program that we applied for and got. So we got a nice little thousand dollar grant from them. And um, what I had stated in my grant application was that I would use that to pay for participants who have successfully completed the uh, project to serve as reviewers. Um, and what that means is probably about a five to six hour commitment, but it will be taking a chunk of these resources. So I think it's comes out to like 60-ish resources or resource sets, excuse me, and just verifying that like the wakelets are working, all the links are working, uh, no. and making sure that the content uh, is uh, accurate in terms of uh, the guidelines that were put uh, into the um, in into the assignments. So. Uh, that will come, I will send out a couple things next week, late next week. One will be a form that asks folks if they're interested to uh, fill out, complete the form and let me know that you're interested in serving as a reviewer. I will be going through those applications and looking basically through some of the things that you've created to make sure that you know they're accurate because obviously if you're going to serve as a reviewer, um, want to make sure that uh, you, you, know, you success were successful in completing all of your resources. Um, the other thing that I'll be sending out is a, uh, is a survey um, for folks to just give feedback, and that will be anonymous, uh, but, and so that won't be an assignment, it will just be an open option for folks to do, but we definitely want feedback on, on how this went for you, what we can improve, because um, this definitely is, I think, the first of, of something that I intend to try to continue and to do for different sets of content and work with different organizations even, um, to support this type of work because I think it's, it's, I'm incredibly pleased and happy with the results and all of your hard work uh, in, in pulling together all of these resources. I'm super excited about that. Um, and just a reminder of the completion requirements, and sorry, here's, here's sort of where we are in terms of our progress. Um, and actually, sorry, I'm just going into it. Here's, uh, I, I sent this out yesterday. Um, so, I've indicated in the Google, excuse me, in the, um, in the resource tracker, I've sort of held resources with the assumption that if somebody had done the Quizlet or has done the Quizlet in the form that they wanna do the Wakelet, um, or if they've done the Quizlet and the form is remaining, I've held that form for the person who did the Quizlet, so in case someone wants to do all three. So I'm gonna ask everyone um, to go in uh, before the end of this week and claim uh, the things that are being held for you. 
um, right now. And so like there's an instruction in the stream, I'm going to send it out as an assignment, um, but I just want to make sure that, that nobody is sort of stepping on something that somebody else wanted to grab. Um, so in the resource tracker right now, I'll actually hop out because this is, it was a little bit of calamity yesterday because um, some, some folks had accidentally grabbed um, other resources. So within the tracker, you're going to see some yellow spots uh, where it says hold for. Um, so if you can scan through to make sure if there's any hold for you, um, if you intend to do it, go ahead and just put your name in. Um, if you do not intend to do it, you can type open and I'll just show you what ends up happening. So if Brenda decides I do not intend to do this and she types in open, uh, it's going to turn green and then people are going to know that that, um, that resource is available. So if people could go through and just make sure I'm not holding anything for you, um, that would be great because I, again, just want to make sure we're not um, stepping on, on the things that folks had intended to um, complete. And then finally, in terms of completion requirements, um, again, to get the uh, certificate at the end and the badge, uh, it's completing either five each of all three of the tools, so five Quizlets, five forms, five Wakelets. That does not necessarily mean you have to do that for the same story, just if your totals for each tool comes to five, you're good. Um, and then if you've chosen to focus on just one tool, um, the uh, minimum would be 15 Quizlets, because really that's essentially a function of just copy pasting very quickly. Um, 10 Google Forms and 10, or 10 Wakelets, those are a little bit more intensive in terms of um, the creation and the steps that it takes to create them. Uh, I see a few more people have popped in, so I'm gonna do this one more time. And in the chat, for those of you who are joining a little bit after the hour, uh, there's a link to the Google Form sign-in sheet. Please complete that as I'm talking right now. Um, because there's a wakelet at, that you get on the confirmation screen that we're going to be using for today's session. And so for today's session, um, we're going to introduce wakelet. So uh, from the feedback uh, and the folks who sort of did the initial sign up way back when, uh, wakelet was definitely the tool that uh, the least number of people had familiarity with. I think um, over the past few months, uh, because we've all been doing so many tech tool trainings, I think people have sort of gotten wind of it a little bit more, but it still might be something that a lot of folks have never dabbled with. So I'm excited to, uh, to, to introduce some of you to this today uh, and for some of you to uh, learn more about how to create a Wakelet. Um, and we're really gonna dive into creating a Wakelet because one of the things that was interesting in pulling together this slide deck is as like with forms where there's so many different settings and things that you can do in a form, Wakelet's pretty basic. Um, it's pretty easy to get started. The second you say create a new collection, um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of what you do. So I am gonna walk through the steps of creating a Wakelet and hopefully you can do that with me. So hopefully um, you've created a Wakelet account um, if you have not uh, created a Wakelet account, when you click on the Wakelet uh, that is in the confirmation screen for the form, uh, you'll be in Wakelet, so you will have the ability to sign up. Uh, creating an account is free. And again, if you want to follow along today, you will need to do that. Um, but if you just want to sort of be a passive observer, I get that that's some people's styles, um, and then go through the recording afterwards, feel free to do that as well. Um, but we'll create just a generic Wakelet, and then uh, we will walk through the steps of building a Wakelet for the EdTech Makerspace. And then we'll talk about next steps um, in terms of just finishing off the work uh, that you've done over the past uh, four weeks, and ultimately it'll be six weeks when we get to the end. Um, as usual with all of the tools, and if you've grabbed the Wakelet, uh, these are in the Wakelet, or this is in the Wakelet. Um, there's a guide and that guide has an overview of Wakelet, just what it is, what you can do with Wakelet and some examples of Wakelets, which, are, which we're going to look at in a second. There are the instructions for creating Wakelets, so step-by-step -step instructions just with text uh, detailing what's in there, detailing uh, things that you need to copy paste in, so the generic text that we're going to make sure is uniform in all of our Wakelets. And then finally, uh, there are visual instructions as well that have uh, animations that sort of show 
the various steps within. There's also a resource creation checklist. Again, uh, this is something just for you to make a copy of if you want, so that you sort of have a nice little checklist that you can make sure that you've completed each of the steps. You do not submit this. This is just more for you to make sure and confirm that you've done everything that is required for the wakelet. The sort of the big trick uh, as part of the wakelet uh, creation is the fact that we're you're going to need to download some image uh, images that you will end up uploading into your wakelet. And so the wakelet, as you're going to see in a second, when you when you paste in URLs into the wakelet, which then get displayed in a nice linear playlist form. There's sort of an image that automatically pops up and it's pulling from the website. It's pulling whatever it, it thinks, you know, it should go there. And a lot of that's based on how the website itself is coded. So sometimes that's the logo or sometimes it's a random image. Uh, it really, I don't actually know sort of what specifically it's pulling, but it tends to sort of find an image on that web page and pull it. So when you paste in the URLs for these things, uh, you're going to see sort of these random images that pop up. In one case with Quizlet, it's not really an image at all. Um, it's like a watermark almost. So we're going to be replacing what Wakelet sort of by default picks up from the websites with these specific icons. Uh, one for the vocabulary cards, really, which Quizlet essentially is, one for the reading, and then one for the comprehension check. So these icons are things that you're going to have to ultimately uh, download to your desktop or wherever is easiest for you to retrieve them. And then you're going to be uploading them into your wakelet each time with these. And we're going to walk through those steps before the end of this training. You'll see exactly how that works. Uh, but right now, those are located in a drive, a shared drive folder that you have access to. It's actually in the wakelet that was shared out you're gonna to have to go in and download those, that, those to your computer. And I'm gonna walk through those steps as well in a second when we um, look at the wakelet. And so that's sort of the, the big trick uh, for this one that's a little different. It's not, not everything's not self-contained in terms of being either in the spreadsheet or um, you know, in, in the uh, supplements that you're, you're working off of. And the other thing about this is you're not gonna need those supplements anymore because you've already created the Quizlet, you've already created the Google Forms, and you have the link to the story. So this literally, for at least the EdTech Makerspace project, is just going to be copy pasting URLs into your Wakelet. But before we walk through those steps for creating um, our Wakelets for the re uh, Reading Skills for Today's Adults Library, we're gonna learn about some of the other cool things that you can add to your Wakelet as well. So, uh, in terms of what Wakelet is, the, it is, as I said, it's kind of the Swiss Army knife of EdTech tools. And uh, there are links here that are also in your Wakelet. And in a second, we'll actually pop open that Wakelet so you can all see it. Uh, but it is a tool that allows you to curate content for learners. And the genesis of this tool in general is that there's lots of great things out there, but when you want to sort of put things in front of your students, you want to be able to curate that in a way that's meaningful. And that sometimes means gathering a bunch of things and just putting them into one place. But often we also want to add like context to those resources and, and give like an intro that says, this is a video that talks about this, pay attention to X or, this is a web page that has information about this topic. Um, as you read, think about what is, what's the creator of this website trying to think about. So it allows you not only to create like a playlist of content or, or even uh, different views of that content, but it also allows you to provide some context for the learner about this is the video you're going to go into, or this is even the Google Doc that you're going to go into, and I want you to do X, Y, or Z within it. Um, so you can gather those things in one place and you can you know, be using this for different reasons. It might be organizing uh, commonly used websites that your students are using. So if you are using a publisher, say uh, Essential, or, uh, GED Academy or TAVE Academy, and you're using Khan Academy, and you're using um, IXL, 
you could create a wakelet that just has those links in one place so that the learner knows to just go to that wakelet and that's where they can launch into any of the different things that you're doing. Um, or you could be putting uh, content together. So maybe it's a sequence of different articles or stories or even tweets about a topic, right? So maybe you are doing an activity on evidence-based reading and evidence-based writing. And so you create a wakelet that has articles uh, that are in like editorial articles maybe in favor of going back to school and in person or articles or, or um, editorial pieces against it and having students uh, complete an activity where they are looking at the pros and cons of going back to school and the arguments and then sort of synthesizing that in some type of writing activity. Uh, or it could just you know, be any sorts of things. It's very flexible. And in fact, Wakelet was not designed, uh, when it was built, the intent was not, oh, this is going to be an education tool. It really was just, hey, this is a way for you to put things together in one place. I have a winter recipes Wakelet. Um, I have created Wakelets when planning trips with friends, where I share the Wakelet with them and you can have people collaborate in it and then we broke it out into, you know, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and people could paste in links into the different things that we want to do over the course of the four days. And it's all contained right there. So you can have the links to the restaurant, you can have a map, you can have all sorts of things that you paste in there. Um, someone asked in the chat, is Wakelet mobile friendly? Yes. Um, part, of, part of the purpose of the EdTech Makerspace in, in just general is to make sure that everything that we're designing and we're creating is mobile friendly because we know that that is the primary way that learners are accessing the internet. And then another use case, uh, or back to what I was actually just saying, um, teachers just sort of got a hold of Wakelet and then started getting super creative in the types of different things that they were doing it. And now education is their largest market in terms of um, where their focus is in terms of the functionality that they're adding into it and to where they're really pushing all of their energy um, is for educators and using it as an ed tech tool. And then a last use case that I think is really important, particularly given um, where we are right now and given that everyone's trying to cobble things together is this can be a tool that allows you to build lessons and bringing in content from various sources and, and sequencing it in a way that makes sense. And so one of the examples that we're gonna look at in a second is, is that. So I've used Wakelet for creating resource lists. Um, and this would be, again, just here's a bunch of great math resources that you can use uh, to, that fit really well for blended learning math lessons. Um, I've created actual lessons for students that are guided lessons that sort of have an intro and then sort of exploration tools where they can explore the concept, learning tools that they can do to learn about that concept, and then practice uh, at the end. So it provides multiple different options for them to explore, to learn, and to practice. And it's all in one place. So it, it's a guided lesson that the student could then ultimately do on their own. And I've also created wakelets that allow for um, just pulling a bunch of content together. So this is one that I use as part of a digital literacy training that I do, where we're talking about like, what are the digital literacy skills that folks need. And so this is a collection of different standards frameworks that, that like sort of attempt to identify like what digital skills are. And there's articles about it. And there's even a couple um, frameworks that have been developed for education and frameworks developed for workforce. And so it's just a collection of different resources that people can um, pull together uh, and, and look at if they're interested in figuring out, okay, how do we define digital literacy? So um, I want folks to, uh, in the chat, I know that um, some of you have used Wakelet based on just the chat that I'm seeing. Uh, if you can provide some examples of either how you currently or have used Wakelet or based on just what I just described, the ways that you think you might, uh, might actually use Wakelet in the future. Um, go ahead and put that in the chat and I'm going to escape out of here because I want to hop into the Wakelet that we should, a resource collection.
Any other ideas? Great resource tools for tutors. Um, sharing my recipes. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it really is. It, it's uh, it's a it's a cool way of doing that. I use it just for my own personal ways. Um, structuring for someone's self-paced learning. And actually, I meant to say that as I was saying that that notion of creating self-paced learning for students is um, in the spirit of what we're doing right now. If you have a handful of teachers that know how to use Wakelet, you have the ability to actually um, go and sort of crowdsource, as we're doing here, uh, lessons around different topics. So if you know you're using like Khan Academy and you know you're using, sorry, I'm just trying to like resize my window because it's, uh, it's like so, there we go. I think that's going to do it. Perfect. Um, you can crowdsource that work so that people are creating these lessons and then building out a body of lessons that students have access to. And I'm actually going to uh, pop into a website. This is uh, some teachers in Florida that, um, that created, um, they use skill blocks, which is a tool that crowded learning has created that allows you to generate um, lists of resources that align to various skills. And I'm actually going to paste this in the chat. These are skill blocks playlists that these folks created. These are all spreadsheets. And so they align to their different, their curriculum at table level E, M, D, and A. And then they created skill blocks for them that they're sharing out with all of their teachers. And so now for these, each of these topics, um, they have the book lessons and then Khan Academy lessons that align to those different skills. And then they went one step further because these are really just resource sets, these skill blocks. They've created, um, all, my, all my windows are getting in the way here, good Lord, sorry. Uh, they've created Wakelet lesson collections so that everybody has access to these. And so they have these resource lists of things that align to skills. And then they've gone in and created Wakelets for each of those. And so these Wakelets allow them to take the, less, the activities that are in the, the skill block, just the sort of the pointing out of these are the Khan Academy lessons, these are the CK12 lessons or others that align to this skill. And now they've created standard-based wakelets where they have an introduction, then this is like a PDF that they have, then they have a video that's going through it, then they have links to other practice opportunities from, in this case, this is a book and the reference to the um, pages of that book that provide additional practice. And then they're creating quizzes in Google Forms. And so suddenly they're building this library of wakelets that's bringing in all of these different videos and different you know, articles or other things, and then sharing those out amongst their educators. And so in, in sort of very rapid uh, succession, they've been building out these libraries that allow people to teach from a distance and provide these self-guided lessons um, for students. And so, you know, that to me is really one of the most powerful uh, things that we could be doing with tools like Wakelet um, is, is, you know, this, this type of notion of crowdsourcing. So, if you have not yet um, grabbed it, and I think everyone who's here has seen the link to the form, let me make sure, no, I've already pasted that in. Uh, I'm gonna share this Wakelet. This is the Wakelet that was at the end of the Google form. So let me paste that in here. And so in speaking of Wakelet examples, uh, here is, the um here is an example of pulling together resources in one place so this is almost like a lesson but i've i've sequenced it out in a way so that it's very clear um what the things are within here and so in this case i've provided a title it's my all about wakelet wakelet um and there's instructions that say you know this is what this collection is so describing what's actually in here and then there's sort of just these, these sequenced things. So you'll see that I've been able to add text, I've been able to add links, um, I've been able to add sort of these, these uh, tiles of different websites 
And within those, I, I can change the title, I can change the description. Again, this is that notion of providing context for the student about what each of these things is that is being linked to. So instead of just a listing of hyperlinks, um, I can actually describe what each of these things is and what they can do with it. And as you can see, I've also created these sort of text fields that allow me to put headers in so that it's very clear what each of these things is. And so um, we're gonna now walk through how to create those, but just so you know what's in the All About Wakelet Wakelet, uh, this is the tracker. So this is a link for you to open the tracker. And you're gonna need that because you're gonna be copying your Google Forms links, you're gonna be copying your Quizlet link, you're gonna be copying the story link, and you're gonna be pasting them into the Wakelet that you're creating. So that's right there. So you, you, know, you can go to this, open that up, because that's the first thing that you're going to need. And then the second thing is there is a Wakelet template that I'm gonna be asking you to use as you create your Wakelets, just because there's some specific hyperlinked text that I want everyone to make sure is in there. And so rather than having you create that from scratch, we're gonna use this template. So that's there. And then the third thing of uh, listing of resources in here is the guides that you've been using in the past. So the, the Wakelet guide, um, the Wakelet checklist, if you want to make a copy of that and uh, check it off as you go. Uh, these slides, so here is a link to the slides that we've been looking at and we'll be looking at for the next hour. And then those Wakelet icons that I said you're gonna need to download. So uh, this was an interesting question that was asked at the tail end of the last uh, Tuesday's training was, would you recommend assigning things through Google Classroom or putting them all in a Wakelet? And I thought that was a really uh, astute question because if you've noticed my previous assignments for creating the Quizlets and creating the forms, I've made an assignment and then I've had um, basically you know, all of the things that I just listed here, right? There's the, there's the guide, there's the checklist, there's the slides, uh, there were no icons for the other things. I'll end up putting the video, this recording into it as well. And so all of those things are in the assignment in Google Classroom, but I could also put them in here. So really I could for this Wakelet assignment, um, because Wakelet is a tool that allows me to share in things like Google Classroom, I could pull all those things into a wakelet and then assign this wakelet as your assignment to create wakelets, um, but it would have all of those things in one place as well. And the, the benefit of that is say this was an assignment that I wanted to do that had all of these resources um, and I wanted to share it with other teachers Building it in a Wakelet allows me to share this exact thing with other teachers, and so they could assign the same thing. What you lose in that is if you have, say, a Google Doc that you're including in the assignment that students are actually filling out, so it's like a, a doc serving as a worksheet, um, or if you have uh, other things like that, those aren't gonna auto automatically be linked to your classroom assignment if you're if you have those things in a wakelet. So like say I wanted to um, have you do this exercise of creating your wakelets, and then I also wanted you to submit a doc that I created that has you write a one paragraph summary of what this experience was like. Um, what you could do is put all the resources like this in a wakelet and assign the wakelet, and then in that assignment, you would just add the Google doc in classroom so that that doc is linked to your actual assignment. And so um, all of the assignment and the context and all of these instructions like live in the Wakelet, which is nice because if you use Google Classroom, one of the challenges is you always have to sort of like recreate those instructions. So all of these assignments could live as Wakelets and then the thing that you want them to like complete or fill out or the worksheet could be attached to the Google Classroom assignment. Um, so it was a kind of an interesting conversation that we had at the tail end. Um, so then within this uh, Wakelet, I also have some additional learning resources for you. So in October of last year, we actually had one of the folks from Wakelet, their director of partnerships, uh, wrote a blog for us, and that blog article is here. 
And then we also did a webinar where he talked about, just uh, got into depth about what Wakelet is, some of the things that I've already shared in terms of how Wakelet got started. Uh, and then actually one of the folks in the EdTech makerspace, she's actually on this call, um, Ashley Winkle, she presented um, some, some examples of how she uses Wakelet with her students. Um, and, and so that's a recording of that webinar from October if you're interested uh, in learning about it. And another cool thing about Wakelet is literally since that October webinar, um, there have been a number of different features uh, and things that they've added. So it's, it's nice because it's a, an actively um, evolving tool where they're adding lots of features because so many teachers are using it and they're getting that feedback and then they're adding features accordingly. So we are going to go back to the slides. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and create a Wakelet together. And you hopefully are in Wakelet. Um, I shared that Wakelet link in the chat. And uh, if you are in there, hopefully you've also created an account. Um, Basically, getting started is very simple once you have an account. Now, you can see for me, I have um, a bunch of collections and I've bookmarked a bunch of different uh, things that, are, that reside in those collections. So that's what these numbers stand for. Um, but even in mine and on yours, if you had, if you had nothing, if this was day one, uh, the first thing that you're going to see on your dashboard is this plus sign to create a new collection. And that is how you go about creating a collection. And when you do that, what you're going to see again is is pretty straightforward because uh, there's not a lot on this screen and it's pretty self-explanatory about what you can do that you can enter the title uh, for your collection so in our case for the edtech makerspace it's going to be the title of the story uh, adding excuse me providing a description so again this is where you might have a lesson intro say you were creating a lesson be because we're trying to do these systematically and, and um, consistently, the template that uh, I'm going to be providing for your EdTech Makerspace Wakelets will already have a description put in and just sort of detailing that this is a story from Reading Skills for Today's Adults. You have the ability to add a cover image. And this is something that uh, I, some people are very excited about on third Tuesday. So whereas with the forms quizzes, I ask that you just use the banner that was in the template and not, um, not like add your own image. And part of that is because Google Forms just doesn't have that many images to begin with in terms of their banners. Wakelet is connected to a library called Unsplash um, that has free images. And so there's a lots of different images that you can pull from um, and add as your banner image. So I am giving you creative license for this to pick an image that relates to your story. And so we're gonna walk through that stuff as well, because um, it's fun. It's actually fun to sort of look through and find images. And then once you've done that, you sort of have all of your sort of like upfront information for learners, uh, as well as an image to sort of give context to what the story is about. And then you're going to be adding your first resource. And so, uh, you know, there's a number of different types of resources that you can put into your Wakelet. We're going to look at that in a second. So as I mentioned, um, and this is in the visual instructions, when you add a cover image, uh, you're given two options, as you can see in this little animation. One option is to upload your own image. So in the Wakelet that I shared with you, my all about Wakelet Wakelet, um, I created a banner image and I uploaded that image into my banner. So you have the ability to upload your own image uh, if you want, or you can choose from this Unsplash library. So Wakelet's automatically integrated into Unsplash. Um, I use Unsplash outside of Wakelet as well. So if you go to unsplash.com, I think that's the website or URL, when I'm creating uh, slideshows for presentations that I do at conferences or even for webinars, uh, one of the things that we've talked about already in some of these trainings is, uh, you know, it's very easy to copy things off of the internet. That doesn't mean that it's allowed. <laughs> and Unsplash is a website that is dedicated basically for photographers to be able to upload their work onto this website and offer it for free. 
um, and without the requirement of, of needing to attribute, attribute um, th those creators. So by submitting their images to that website, they are acknowledging um, that these are freely available images that anybody can use uh, without the necessary, like the necessity of um, attributing it. But when you download an image from Unsplash, it, 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 it says, you know, it'd be great if you could, but it's not required. Um, I just bring this up because it's, it's different than Creative Commons licensing. Like Creative Commons is just sort of a universal licensing, but some different websites uh, that are out there for images, for media files, for videos, for sound files even, um, their terms of use actually state like you can or cannot use this for commercial purposes or, or X, Y, Z. Um, Wakelet is a tool that you know, allows you to pull in all of these different things. And in their terms of use, they do make note of the fact that, you know, say you're adding your own image, uh, make sure that if it's not coming from Unsplash's library, that it's an image that you have permission to use. Now, they're not monitoring it per se, um, but, you know, basically on Wakelet's term of use, if, if you say grabbed an image from some photographer and they figured somehow found it, um, you're liable for, you know, using their intellectual property. Um, and so that's why Wakelet is linked to a library that is, has terms that allow you to use those freely. Um, and if you were to add your own co cover image, as I've done, um, you, you, as the user, just need to make sure that you have the right to use that image. So actually, the banner that I've used for the EdTech Makerspace um, comes from a website where they are freely downloadable. You are able to um, use them even for commercial use. And so that's where that little, you know, phone icon that I've been using for the EdTech Makerspace came from. But I made sure to grab an image that I have, you know, the, um, the permission to use for these purposes. And that's just something that I like to make sure um, folks are aware of because it's just really important to be respectful of intellectual property. Uh, once you add that image, you have the ability to adjust the cover, uh, the, the size. So it's called the cover image. So you could make it a full cover image, a half cover image, which is what I'm asking people to do, because the full cover image kind of takes up the entire screen. So I don't like the notion that someone has to scroll just to even get to content. A uh, half cover, cover image makes it like nice and condensed so you can see the title and the description and the image on the screen that you land on. And then you also have the ability to just not have the cover image show up at all. And what that means is when you're actually in the Wakelet, there's no image. But if you're looking at sort of a, a directory of Wakelets, um, that image would appear as a thumbnail just to provide some context. So uh, let's go through those steps together right now. So I'm going to go into Wakelet. And again, you, maybe you've used Wakelet before. Uh, maybe you haven't. Uh, but if you are in an account, like if you created your account, the top left always is this create a new collection. So go ahead and click on create a new collection. And as promised, this is the very um, simple screen. Maybe a tiny URL for the instruction page. Oh, thank you, uh, Sue. Um, so this is the uh, basically a start from scratch screen. And again, there's not a lot of things on here, which is one of the things I really like about Wakelet. So there's very few things you can do here, um, but we're gonna add a cover image, but I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go through and actually make a Wakelet for one of my stories, just so that we can be doing this in um, succession. So uh, one of my stories is Mia Hamm. Uh, now, if you don't know who Mia Hamm is, she is a professional soccer player. Uh, so, like, I'm just getting into that because that's when we're talking about images, the images uh, should relate to your story, right? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm giving you creative license, don't, don't make me regret it. Uh, so we want to make sure that you're adding an image that really relates to the story and isn't just totally out there. So uh, when I click on, <laughs> no selfies, Rachel. <laughs> uh, when I click on add a cover image, um, I have the opportunity to either upload an image or choose from library. Um, so I'm gonna go to choose from library. Now, I'm gonna look for Mia Hamm. I doubt that there's one 
on here, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Um, just to see if, if there is one. So I have no idea what it's actually pulling from here, but obviously, uh, you know, none of these is Mia Ham. So, oh well, I don't think there's any images of actual people on here. Although if you're the one that grabbed uh, the um, Bloody Sunday, uh, I, I did look up the Edmund Pettus Bridge and there was a picture of John Lewis, which is super cool. So hopefully you add that, but you can do what you want. Uh, but Meehan's a soccer player, right? So I'm gonna look up soccer. And there's plenty of images of soccer. Um, and so, you know, I can go through here and think about these things. Now, you know, one of the things just, I came from a publishing background. So uh, when you're selecting pictures, think about representation, think about, um, you know, making sure that you're representing diverse cultures. So maybe the muscly dude with a soccer ball probably isn't the image that I'm gonna put into the top of my uh, Mia Hamm article about a female soccer player. Um, so maybe I'm just not gonna have a person at all. Or, you know, here's a girl soccer player, but that's a little weird because now I'm sort of suggesting that this or this is Mia Hamm, which we know it's not. Um, so maybe I just go with something as simple as a soccer ball on a net, that. And when I click on it, it's automatically going to uh, just appear um, here. And so the default is full cover image. And again, I ask, and again, here's, here's why. Like when we're looking at this, like when a student lands on this, all they're seeing is this image. And I just think that's um, maybe confusing because they're gonna like be required to have to scroll to get to anything. So I'm gonna do half cover image. So when we have that, they're going to like see the title of the collection, you know, right away. And so again, the title of this story for me is Mia Ham. And so that is where I add the um, description, uh, excuse me, the title of the story. Now, uh, the template that you have um, already has the uh, description in it. And so I'm just going to copy paste that. Uh, you, you are just gonna make a copy of this template, but I'm gonna just go ahead and just show that I could click in here and then type, whoa, I had to copy it first. Oops. Oh gosh, I keep clicking on that like Google thing that's in the way. Here we go. It doesn't want me to do that. I'm gonna command C. <laughs> Uh, and paste. It just doesn't want me to do that because it's text that it's not allowing me to copy. So here is the description. <laughs> um, so in some of the examples that I had uh, in the presentation actually, and again, as with all my presentations, these are all linked. Here's like the guided lesson. Um, this was a lesson that I created on equivalent fractions. And so Again, thinking about that context piece, right? When you're creating a lesson, um, what better thing for fractions than the ubiquitous pizza example? But like I, you know, I put an image of a pizza in here and then I put some context in, like look at the photo. Um, how many whole pizzas do you see? How many slices are there? How many slices would you like to eat? If it were cut into smaller slices, would you eat more slices or fewer slices? Um, so it's getting at this notion that when you, you know, cut something into more pieces, they're smaller, um, and just getting into that sort of concept of fractions. And so I'm relating it to the photo that I'm using for the wakelet. So, um, you know, photos shouldn't be gratuitous. They should actually be like related to the content that you're trying to um, teach. So one thing about wakelet that's cool about this text, when you're entering text into a wakelet, you're gonna see this little icon here um, that has a book and a speaker. And if I click on that, uh, Wakelet is integrated into Microsoft Immersive Reader. So Immersive Reader is a tool that basically allows you to open up that text into a view like this, and it's really designed for accessibility. So my default is uh, increased spacing. You can adjust the spacing you can adjust the size, you can adjust the font and the contrast. Uh, and this would be a student actually in this wakelet being able to do these things. 
Um, you can't set these things for the student. Like this is something that they're experiencing, but it has audio. Look at the photo. How many whole pizzas are there? How many slices are there? How many slices would you like to eat? It's, and it's a really good audio and it actually pauses appropriately in some cases. You can have a male, female, you can have a, 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 a female voice, a male voice, and you can actually adjust the speed um, so that it's slower or faster. So I had it at one, if I go to eat. Look at the photo. How many whole pizzas are there? How many slices are there? Um, and so that integration uh, is in any text that you create. So if I add a, a, a chunk of text, it can be read to the student if they click on that. Um, when I add websites, uh, it also has the ability, if, if the website is designed cleanly, to pick up the text from that website, and you'll see that there's this little beta here that has um, read mode, which allows it to read the text from the website. That is hit or miss, and it doesn't really work for a lot of websites because lots of websites are designed with all sorts of things all over the place. But for your instructional text, um, you know, when you think about even if you wanted to just like, you know, put a story in here, like you could actually, you know, add text, like not in your intro here, but one of the elements that you could add could just be text. You could add that and then it's going to have this icon so that it can be read to students. So it's a really cool feature of Wakelet that's integrated into it. So now I've done everything that we've covered so far. We've got our image, title, description, um, and now we're going to just go back in here to where we left off, I think. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, what I'm about to show you is um, when I'm in a Wakelet in my edit mode, uh, there's a little settings icon here. So we're in the editing mode right now. And you'll see that it automatically is saving changes, which is something that's been added in recent months. It was a very annoying part of Wakelet um, where it wasn't automatically saving and sometimes you would lose your work. So now it does that as does like say Google Docs and, and other Google type things. So if I click on that settings icon when I'm in edit mode, these are my options. And this is important because we want to create wakelets that um, are shareable. And what that means is when somebody uh, sees a wakelet, uh, your wakelets that you've created, that they have the ability to actually copy that Wakelet and make it their own. Um, so that maybe they like what you've done, but they wanna add in some things or remove some things um, or rearrange things. And so in your settings, that's where you make things copyable. Uh, one of the things that you can do in your settings is also add a background image. So we added that cover image. There's a background to the Wakelet. You can also add an image there. I tend to believe that the image on image thing is a little bit of a sensory overload for folks. Um, so we are not going to add a background image, but I will show you how um, to do that. Um, the other two settings are sharing. So this is where if you click this on, it's going to allow you others to copy your collection. You're going to have to do this for me because you're going to be creating these wakelets in your account. And I am ultimately going to need to be able to copy it to add it to the crowded learning account. Because again, this is more of a notion of, I want to make sure that like these remain in, in, uh, around and actually in existence. Uh, you know, maybe you created one and a year later, you're like, what, what is this Mia Ham thing? I'm going to remove this or delete it. And then suddenly nobody has access to that anymore. So they'll, they'll reside, the copies will reside in the crowded learning account but you need to click uh, sharing capability on so that I have the ability to make that copy. And what's cool, which we discovered on Tuesday, is that in the, um, when someone's viewing the Wakelet, they're going to see that this collection was copied from your collection. So you kind of, it has that sort of attribution built in, which is nice because a lot of these tools that allow you to copy other people's things and move them into your own account, they don't like the Quizlets. Like once I copied those over, they don't give any attribution to the person who created them. Um, so I like that about Wakelet that it's doing that. 
it does get a little bit cumbersome in the intro because it's going to have all these like copied from so and so, copied from so and so. Um, but it's good that they're paying attention to the fact that uh, they're providing a tool that allows for copying resources from other people, and they're building in the functionality that it's actually making sure that it's attributing back to um, where the content was copied from. Then the third setting is collaboration. So say you and a couple other teachers, or like when I was giving that example of planning a trip, when I created my Wakelet, I um, turned this on so that multiple people could go into my Wakelet and add things. And the cool thing about collaboration is people don't actually even need a Wakelet account in order to do that because they're working in the, the Wakelet that's in your account. Um, so, um, it's just a matter of like you can create a wakelet and say, hey, uh, can you add like videos that you know are really good on pick a topic um, and, and anyone could go ahead and add those. You could even, you know, make your students collaborators on a wakelet um, and teach them how to add something and then the students could actually be building a wakelet. So it could be something like, what's your favorite restaurant in the neighborhood? Um, you know, so do an activity where they have to find the website for a restaurant or find the website for, for something. And, and then, you know, they can be a contributor in here and then they can add it into. And so suddenly you've created a, uh, that, or maybe it's find a recipe of one of your favorite dishes. They could do that and then make them contributors and then all of your students can be pasting into a wakelet. So that's what this collaboration setting means. And then the other thing that you have to be aware of is by default, your wakelets are going to be listed as private. And that's because like, you want to you want to make sure the wakelet is done before you make it available to other people. So uh, by default, your wakelets are private, um, which means just you can see it, or just you and your collaborators if you've made it um, uh, open for contributions. Um, you can make it unlisted so that it's only people who actually get that link uh, can see it, or you can make it public. So mine's public as I'm making it right now. So now in Wakelet, if someone was to do a, or it will be public, when someone does a search for Mia Ham, um, this will very likely pop up because I don't think there's a lot of Wakelets on Mia Ham. Maybe there are, maybe I'd be surprised. Um, but when something is public, that means somebody doing a search within Wakelet, if they happen, if they type in reading skills for today's adults, uh, they're gonna see all the Wakelets that um, actually are, are from the reading skills for today's adults library. Um, and so that's what that public means. And so our wakelets will be public for that very reason. So let's just uh, hop in so that we can um, you know, look at those two things now. I'm gonna close this so that I don't get confused. So the first thing that we, uh, someone just asked, uh, are we saying yes to collaboration? Uh, no, I mean, you could, but it's actually not, not no, you don't have to because there, there's no collaboration here. You're going to build it and then I'm just moving it into our, um, into the crowded learning account. So, uh, the only thing that you're going to need to do is click here. Um, and then that is going to make your Wakelet copyable to others. Um, adding a background image, just so you can see what I'm talking about. It's the same options that you would have for um <clears throat> adding a cover image you can either upload your own image or you could choose from a library um so again like i could like find soccer images and you know maybe this isn't going to be too uh intrusive because it's just a stadium behind it so that's not terrible but i still just am opposed <laughs> Uh, to these things and so we're just going to leave it plain so if I go back to change background image I could remove um, one tip that someone gave the other day which I I like um, is you could go to add a background image and maybe you want the crazy contrast and that's cool I'm not judging anybody uh, but if you go to choose from library again you could just type in a color uh, and there's gonna be images for that or I could type in like grass, I guess, because it's a soccer field. Um, you know, so maybe it's something that's nice and subtle, uh, like this. You know, where the background is kind of consistent. It's just like like a soccer field. That makes sense. And 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 it's a sort of you know, not too crazy over the top um, 
uh, in terms of there, there being all sorts of things going on. But if I was to type in green, um, you know, there's, there's always going to be at least one image that is like basically just the color green. And so it does provide some of that contrast without sort of the craziness of being like a seizure inducing image overload. And um, I, again, I'm, I'm really editorializing right now. <laughs> My feelings about images on images. Um, so sorry if you're a fan of, of that. We're gonna not do that for the EdTech Maker Space. Um, and then the other thing that I need to do is make it public. So that's up here. Now, again, you might not wanna do that until you're done, but uh, you know the, the likelihood that someone's searching for Mia Hamm uh, in the time between now and the time that I've created it is probably unlikely. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make this public. So the two things I've adjusted with my settings are I've made it copyable, and I did that over here. And I've made it public, which I've done over here. And you'll see that all of these uh, changes have been saved. So now I've got all my, my starting pieces, uh, the settings are set to what I need to be. So now we're gonna add things to our Wakelet. So Wakelet allows you to add a bunch of different um, things in it. So the main three that I've used pr primarily are pasting URLs, which is where you copy a link and then it, it shows up as a, sort of a tile within the Wakelet where you can add descriptions about what that website is. You can give it a title um, and then detail about it. Add text is where you add actual, like maybe instructions. So in addition to the description of the Wakelet, the all about Wakelet Wakelet, um, these little things, this additional learning resources where I've had this, I have this nice like big heading and then detail and then the same thing for number three the same thing for number one. Um, those are, I've added a text element to my Wakelet. And you'll notice in this case, sometimes I, I will use text and then just put the link to something that is needed just right here, as opposed to putting in separate, like you get this long list of things uh, here, like this is a URL, this is a URL, this is a URL, and these are all resources that I've linked but I could just as easily create a text box and then have link, 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 or you know, within it or within like the body, um, I can hyperlink the text. So it depends on how like expansive or contracted you want it to be and how much you want in terms of those like different like visual elements on, on your page. So you can put, you can embed URLs within your text uh, field or you can just take websites and resources and have them is I'm just gonna call these separate tiles. So for the EdTech Makerspace, we're gonna be creating three separate tiles, um, which is done by pasting a URL in, and it's automatically going to create these tiles. Um, and then I can also add YouTube um, images. So when you click on YouTube, it's gonna ask you to find a uh, YouTube URL, and then it's going to allow you to paste it. So. I'm going to just go in and just show some of those things uh, here now. I'm going to add here. And so these are those three things. Some of the other things that you can do is you could add Twitter uh, tweets. So you'd have to link your Twitter account to it. But say you were doing something on a current event and you wanted to put tweets from, say, people on both sides of an issue, um, you could add those tweets. And, and like that could be a wakelet that students are seeing those and discussing um, you know, what, what the differing opinions are. Bookmarks pulls from anything that you've ever added to a Wakelet. So remember that panel that said I have like 200 something bookmarks? Those are all of the various things that I've added to Wakelets. You can add uh, an image. So say you have an image of something that you want to put into the sequence of, uh, of a Wakelet, you have the ability to do that. You can upload a PDF. So if you remember the Wakelet that I showed you from the, uh, from the South Carolina teacher that was creating those lessons for math, they had a PDF up front. So they went and uploaded that into their Wakelet. You can directly upload from your Google Drive. Now, remember I, we have those icon images. Those are in my Google Drive, but they're not in your Google Drive. So um, that's why we're just gonna ask you to download those images and then we'll show you how to upload them. But you could 
be uploading directly from your Google Drive into here or OneDrive, which is similar to Google Drive. It's the it's Microsoft's sort of version. Uh, and then you have the ability to upload your own video. And the video is pretty cool, just so you can see this. So this would be where I have the ability to record up to 10 minutes of myself. I'm gonna move my panels here. And I have the ability to add different options. So I can, um, I can record my screen. So if I wanted to show somebody how to use something, this is really getting weird for me. Um, if I wanted to show something how to use something, I could put it in there. I can do different effects um, and like put emojis and text or draw on here. Um, we're not going to do that. I can also do like a split screen in here if I want. Um, that was in my options where half the screen, and now we're gonna freeze, half the screen is me and half the screen is like a whiteboard um, and you could be drawing on it. So, and then that just automatically gets embedded into your Wakelet, uh, which is really cool. So if you wanna be providing sort of um, instruction or say it's kind of a mix of what you would be doing in a synchronous lesson, but you can actually build it into your Wakelet so then anybody would have access to you giving your instruction or sequence in the Wakelet and then you've got all the resources that go along with it. And that's really nice because like, you know, I'll do things, but I'll create like a YouTube video or a video and then I've got to now add it to YouTube or to whatever my video sharing service is. I have to do that and then add that to the Wakelet. This allows you to embed those videos right into your account, which is, you know, or into your Wakelet itself, which is super cool. Um, but da -da -da -da. Jeff, can you show the how you do the whiteboard? I don't see those options when I try oh, to. Uh, sure. Um, so here I am in the video, and I had to connect to Flipgrid when when I when I opened it the first time. I don't see all those options. Oh, I, see, I'm not. I don't have a Flipgrid account, so I don't know. So because someone said this is Flipgrid, which I guess it is. Um, I don't know huh. why it's giving me this, but uh, under the effects. There's this board, um, and I could do like a chalkboard here. And then when I do that, I can, hi, here I am, come, come in. You can split your screen. Um, and then you have the ability to uh, draw on it. Yep, I, it's under effect. I see it. Thank you. You found it? Yep. I think I lost you there. Yes, I did see it. It's under effects. I, I, I'm with you now. I got, got it. it. Yeah. So yeah, you can add the board and then uh, within that you can do that split screen. Um, so it's kind of a, it's really nice actually. I've never used it per se in terms of anything I've created. I'm a little freaked out about seeing myself as I'm doing something, but um, I don't know, maybe I could cover half my screen or something when I'm doing that. But um, again, I, I really like that because it allows you to do a very quick lesson on a topic, right? And then have all the resources that students would need to complete it right there. So they're getting kind of that connection to you and the direction sort of audibly. Um, and then, you know, then they can walk through, say, a set of resources that you want them to complete for that Wakelet. And if you don't want your stuff advertised all over Wakelet, again, you can make it unlisted. So then only your students are seeing that Wakelet as opposed to um, the entire Wakelet universe, right? Uh, all right, so are there any other questions up to this point? All right, so let us get into adding some elements. So when I add a URL, um, oh, just so you, well, we have to actually add something first. So when I add a URL, um, the default when you add an element is this paste a web address, okay? So that could be any, any URL that you wanna put in there. And let, I'll just go to a random one. Um, so for example, and this is shameless self-promotion of crowded learning resources, but this is skill blocks, which allows teachers to create a code, uh, which has a skill block. So this is a skill block on angles and lines. And this has, maybe you don't want the wakelet with all of those things, or maybe you want them to do specific activities around angles and lines, but then you've created this skill block that has all of these other resources that they can go to. So I could literally just copy this URL and then in my Wakelet, um, again, the default when I click on plus is paste URL. I'm gonna paste that. And what you're gonna see happens 
is it's automatically um, picking up the name of the title of that skill block and it's saying where it's from and then it's picking up additional text. So like if we can sort of read this as to what it's doing, it's picking up the first image it saw, which is, uh, actually it's weird that it was that one and not this one, but it's picking up this image. Um, it's picking up the title. So this is a web page that has a title and that is, um, where's my wait, but here it is. Uh, that's what it's picked up. And then it's, it's picking up some of the text on, on the page. And so you have the ability, I'm gonna close out my all about Wakelet, Wakelet, because that's getting in my way. Uh, you have the ability once you've added something, this is a weird sequence of steps, is you paste it um, and suddenly it's an element and you, like, you're clicking on it and you're like, what do I do with it, right? Uh, when you're hovered over any of your elements, you have these two options and you have the ability to edit and you have the ability to delete. So um, this is where when I go in, I can you know, type in the title that I want. And then this is where I can click in here and I can go, this is what I want you to do. Um, so when you're adding resources for students or websites, again, this is that notion of providing context for the student. The one thing you can't change is this, it is like this is the source. And so it, it makes sure that it's always maintaining that source, which again, I think is a nice thing about Wakelet. So it's like sort of preventing you from claiming like this is mine. It's, it's saying and giving attribution really to the original source of um, you know, what, this, what this resource is, what this website is. Um, so, and then I also have the ability to edit that image. Now again, I already said done. So in order to edit that image, I just click on the edit icon again, and then I have the ability to edit it. And one of the strange things uh, is it actually is picking up multiple images from that um, page. So I, you know, I could, these are the four images that it's picked up. I, I could go to like, this is skill block. So it's a little weird though, cause it's just gonna fit it the way it wants to fit it. So, you know, when we created skill blocks, we didn't create it in a way that is like, oh, hey, uh, we want it to fit nicely in a thumbnail, the, the image in, in a wakelet. So you have the ability to adjust that. And so for our purposes, we're going to be doing that. If I wanted to add a video, um, I could go to YouTube here and then it's gonna have me search YouTube. So um, if I went to my channel or if you have, the, maybe I could spell the name of my organization right. I like, Ashley, if you wanna chime in or anyone that's used wakelet, I am finding that does not find things very well. <laughs> Have you experienced that? Um, I haven't really used that feature very much, so I don't know the answer. Because in my, uh, and I shouldn't have deleted it because I need to get to resource now, but in my All About Wakelet Wakelet, um, I added a video and to my YouTube channel and it like wasn't finding and I was thinking it was cause maybe like the publishing was delayed, but um, you also can just add a URL of a video and it would, it would put it in just the same. So you could go that YouTube route uh, or you could just um, add a video as you would. So if I go to the crowded learning, geez, my typing skills are phenomenal today. YouTube channel. And uh, I go to one of these videos, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Um, you can go to any video and then go to the share, pause, the share link and grab that and then just add that element to your Wakelet uh, here. Now, actually just notice what I just did. So now I have this resource here and you'll see I have the ability to add something above it and I have the ability to add something below it. So you're gonna think you're gonna have, we're gonna have our vocabulary, we're gonna have our story, and we're gonna have our Google form in that order. And so that is, um, that is uh, the order that you're gonna do. So you need to make sure that you're sort of putting things in the right order. So I'm gonna paste this in, and now it's pasting in uh, this video. And you're gonna see when you paste in a, a video like that from YouTube, it shows up a little differently. So uh, the video is just sort of like appearing in a player right there. 
But again, I have the ability, if I want to edit it, so the same thing, edit icon, I could change the title. Um, and I could do this as well, um, add my own description of it. So it's going to be picking up whatever the description of the video was from YouTube, but you have the ability to adjust those as well. Um, and I click done to make it done. So now I have these two elements in here. And if I want to move them, you can see it's just kind of drag and drop and you can rearrange them. Uh, that gets a little cumbersome if you have a bunch of things in there. So they have this easy reorder mode, um, which sort of condenses everything into little things like this. And it just makes it easier for you to rearrange those things around the screen. Um, the other thing, just so you know about Wakelet, this is the default uh, layout, which is sort of a media view and playlist. But you do have the ability to do other types of views. You can do a compact view, um, which I do think is kind of nice if you've got a bunch of different resources. And both of these are views that if you want students to be working thing in a sequence, uh, it's recommended because it, it puts it into a sequential mode. But you could also do it in sort of a tile mode like this. So this is a grid view where it's going to be sort of a two by two grid all the way down. So it is sort of in a sequence and an order. And you do have the ability to rearrange those things within, um, as well as a mood board um, where uh, the mood board, it's just sort of piles things in, in whatever way you want. So, I mean, that could be if you're just getting pretty abstract with things and just want to have a bunch of things that maybe are just available for students to explore, but you have, there's no necessarily like rhyme, reason, or order that is necessary for it. But for our wakelets, we're going to do media view. Um, and that is this layout here. So I'm going to delete these things because these are obviously not things that are going to be in our readings. And now I'm going to uh, go to the All About Wakelet wakelet. Because this, again, has everything that you need. So for you creating your EdTech Makerspace Wakelet, um, you're going to click on this. It will be in the assignment as well. But if you copy this link uh, or click on it, it's going to open a new Wakelet. And this is a generic Wakelet that you're going to use to create your uh, EdTech Makerspace uh, Reading Skills for Today's Adult Wakelet. Now you're going to see that the only thing that I have in here is this intro, which everyone's going to leave the same. And then there's also this attribution text at the end. And the reason I'm just not having you create it from scratch is the attribution text. It's got a bunch of different hyperlinks and I'm not necessarily uh, saying that people aren't capable of adding hyperlink text, but this would be three separate URLs that I need to make sure that you're, hyperlinking correctly um, and that you know that would just be cumbersome so this default attribution text is in here however you're going to see there's this underline so one of the things that I'm asking you to do is to edit this element and add your name to it um, attributing you as having created this collection as part of um, this, this project so as it is right now, you can't do anything with it. And you don't have this edit collection button because it's, this is my uh, wakelet, it's not yours. But what you're gonna do is make a copy of this wakelet. So if you go ahead and click on copy, it's now going to say copy collection. So I'm actually going to, um, I'm gonna actually call this Mia Ham. It's not enough to Mia Hams, but that's okay. Um, so you would enter in the title of your story and by like automatically it's going to copy this collection over to your account. Now you're going to say, wait, nothing happened. Uh, that's because you have to go back to your home screen. And now my challenge is I'm going to have like two Mia hams. So you see the Mia ham that has the soccer ball in it because I already did that. Now I have this blank one. So this is the one that I copied. So I'm going to go to this. And so now it's already been titled. Um, it's already been, uh, it's got the introduction and it's got uh, this information. So uh, 
I can't do anything in here right now because I'm in view mode. So once you've done this, you're gonna to need to go into edit collection in order to edit the elements uh, within this. So again, um, this is Mia Ham. I'm gonna choose from library, I'm gonna do soccer. So these are things that we've already done. Um, I'll just do a soccer net this time. Actually, this will help, they'll know the difference between the two. It's a full cover image, I'm gonna make it a half cover image. Um, and now I have the ability to add things. So this attribution text is gonna be at the very end. So I'm gonna be adding all of my elements before. But just uh, in terms of this is text that exists, if I wanna edit it, I just go to edit. And when I'm in a text box, it's just like any other text editing feature, like I can click within, I can add paragraphs, I can center, I can do, uh, I can create headings and boldface things. Um, the thing that you're gonna do in here is replace the underline with your name um, because we want to attribute you to having created this wakelet. And so now that attribution text is done. So now I'm gonna add my elements. And so um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add my three elements first and then we're gonna add the images uh, last. So we'll go a little bit over 11.30, but uh, it's pretty straightforward and simple. But before you do that, um, in the All About Wakelet, Wakelet, I love saying that, um, go to your, the guide because the guide has the text that you will be pasting uh, and the, the things that you'll be pasting in for each of these elements. So in the guide, we have, again, this is just all, if you wanna read and learn more, here are those examples that were in the slides as well, of uh, different types of wakelets for different purposes. But here are the instructions for creating wakelets. And so it's got the link in here as well. So it's got the link to make a copy um, of, of the wakelet template. So uh, that would bring you to that copy, the, the generic one, and you would just make a copy as we showed you. Then you can add your cover image, then your title, and the first thing we're gonna add is the vocabulary practice. So again, um, you would want the resource tracker open. Uh, you can't add anything until you've added the URL, like the things that are gonna be contained in that, in that section for that resource. The, the, the first thing that puts that in motion is adding the URL. And so here in my Mia Ham wakelet, and I'm gonna close this so I don't get confused with all of these. Um, I am gonna add my first element here, which is going to be that URL. So I need to paste a URL in there. So if I go to my tracker, here's my story on me and Ham. I'm gonna scroll over to the URL. And actually, I'm gonna show you something that, uh, that is important here, just because it's gonna, it makes things a little bit easier. When you hover over in Google Docs, any Google Docs, so slide sheets uh, or Docs itself, um, you're gonna see that like to, to launch this, it's got the link right there. But then there's three different icons over here. Copy link, there's edit link, and then there's remove link. So if I wanna remove the link uh, and make this not hyperlink text, I can do that. But um, this, is, this copy link, when I click on it, it's going to copy the hyperlink, and you'll see it says link copied to clipboard, uh, of that URL that's in here. So now I've copied the story uh, URL, which is actually not what I wanted to do. That's gonna be the second thing, so my bad. Actually, I'm gonna do the story URL first so I can just show the rearranging thing. So I've copied um, the story URL. So oops, I'm doing this out of order, but that does not, my life's not over here. Um, so now the story has been added and you'll see it's like the by default, it's just like putting the URL there and then it's putting in actually, this is the text of the story. So we don't want that. What we want is, I'm gonna scroll down to reading selection and title of story. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna, I have to edit. So remember it's there and I have to actually do this first. So I've pasted that in and it's Mia Ham is the title. And then I wanna change the text down here. So I'm gonna delete what's there. I'll go back to my guide, and then these are directions. So I'm gonna highlight that, copy it, go to my wakelet. In the description text, I'm gonna paste that. 
And this is just giving the student context. So that's, a, that's one thing about Wakelet, right? We are, we're creating these things that a student is going to a Quizlet, we have the thing where a student is going to reading skills for today's adults, and we have the thing where a student is going to Google Forms. So it's nice for us to provide context for the student in terms of what, what is it that you're about to jump into, right? So you're gonna, there's a reading selection, it's about me and him, and your instructions are to read the story, and it gives details about these audio files that can help them. Not gonna worry about the image right now. So again, the order that we want is vocabulary, we're gonna front load the vocabulary, story, and then the Google Forms quiz. So, oops, I did the story first, but again, I have the ability to add an element above it or below it. So we'll now do the vocab, and I'm gonna add that vocab above the story. And again, the default option is to paste a URL. So I'm gonna go to my EdTech Makerspace um, resource tracker, and here we are in this row, and I'm gonna go to my, quiz, my um, Quizlet URL. Now, this is important. There are two Quizlet URLs. One is the one that you created. The other is the one from the Crowded Learning Library. So I have gone through and copied Quizlets over um, into the Crowded Learning uh, Quizlet Library. I want you to use those just because, again, like if a year from now you're like, I hate Quizlet, I'm deleting my account, or you just remove something for some reason, suddenly those resources disappear. So that's why we're putting um, the crowded learning version in it. And so again, same uh, process, I've highlighted or I've clicked in this cell and it's giving me these options. I can just copy the link. I go back to my Wakelet, I paste, click paste. So it's automatically picking this up and it actually is like, it's picking up the title of um, the Quizlet that we created. So this is a little bit cleaner in terms of the default automatic pickups. But again, we're just gonna edit these to be consistent. So in the guide, I'm gonna delete that. And we're gonna, this first thing is gonna be called vocabulary practice. I don't need to copy paste that, I can type that. And then we're gonna add this directions for the student. Copy it. And now I'm gonna paste that, done. And so now we've copy pasted uh, and we've got the links. Now, one of the things about Quizlet is really weird. I don't know why it's not at least like picking up the Quizlet logo here in the image, um, but for some reason it's, it's not detecting anything that it wants to pick up. And so by default, there's nothing there, but we're gonna add those icon images as a last step. So now we're gonna do the same thing, same exact thing, we're gonna add a Google form and the form quiz is gonna come at the end. So vocabulary, story, quiz. So we'll add that after the story, the attribution text is at the absolute bottom. And again, here's the uh, URL that we're gonna paste. And now I'm gonna go over to my Google forms. Now your Google Forms have been created in the Crowded Learning Drive. So um, that part's there. We didn't, I'd have to make any copies of your forms, but you made two different URLs. One was the view the form to actually take the Quizlet or the uh, Google Form quiz. One was the copy URL. Because these are student facing wakelets, we want the URL of in column N, the one where like a student launches this, they're actually going to take the quiz. So I'm gonna go here to Mia Ham. I'm going to copy that link in column N, the share URL, and now I'm going to paste that in here. And Google Forms does a nice job of actually cleanly um, picking up, it's like literally got an image of the form, and then it's got the title, and then it's got the directions here. So, um, for some reason, the way Google Forms is designed, it literally, the, the text that it extracts is like perfect. Like there's the title, there's the image, and there's the direction line. But we're still gonna adjust the direction line um, a bit and the title here and paste it. And just one thing to note in terms of what we're ultimately creating, just so you know why we did the exercise of creating those copy URLs for, um, for the quizzes is once these are out in the world, we're gonna have this library that's student facing, but the, there is going to be a, a resource, uh, not, the, not the tracker in its current form, 
but there'll be a resource tracker that has all of those URLs that is available to teachers. And what that means is teachers will be able to go to these wakelets, see the wakelets that you've created. And then if they want, they could copy the wakelet into their own wakelet account, and then they could switch out and delete the current form in there, which is this, this generic one, and add a copied version of that form into the wakelet so that they have wakelets that they're giving to their students and the quizzes that students are doing in there is gonna go into you know, that teacher's Google Drive. So that's why you created those copy um, versions of the Google Forms, is that will allow any teacher that wants to be able to customize these wakelets and put in a quiz that they're gonna get their students' um, uh, results as opposed to it just going into this generic form. Um, so now we're just gonna edit this reading selection, and, or the quiz, excuse me. And so um, with the quiz and text, we're calling this comprehension check. So I'll copy that. I'm gonna paste that in here. And then um, the text we're gonna just put is answer the questions to check your understanding of the reading. Uh, and the reason th this is a generic text is, you know, these stories range from, from like very early Lexile levels to uh, level D. So I wanted to make sure these directions were very um, simplistic in terms of the wording. And so that's, that's why we're putting in, like, you know, in this read this, it's giving very sort of chunked out directions. Um, that was intentional. So for all intents and purposes, uh, this wakelet is now done. Um, but we need to add those icons. So that's sort of the last step. And I'm sorry, we'll, we're going a little bit over here, um, but this is not that hard. Uh, once we do one, you'll know how to do all three. So where do I get those images? So in the, oh, I did it again. Why do I keep, <laughs> maybe I, I'm gonna add to the directions, grabbing those icons. I'll put it in there, but I need to go back to my all about wakelet wakelet. Um, so I keep keep trying to clean things up and make sure that they're, I'm not overwhelming my screen here. But in your all about wakelet wakelet, uh, there is a link to the icons. And these, this will also be in the assignment in Google Classroom as well. So I'm putting everything in both places, um, but this is technically all you need. So you, like these just are in a shared drive that you only have view only access. So the way that you're going to uh, get these is you could either right click on each one and click download, and then it's going to download and then you select where you want it to go. Or I can, uh, I can shift and hold and click the top one, click the bottom one, and it's gonna select all three. And then I could right click and download. So you could do it as each individual file, or you could just do what's gonna be basically a zip download. And it's gonna download all three of them into a zip folder. So you can see right now, it's zipping those three files. And I apologize that it's taking so long. Do, 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 do. Wow, it's uh, really slow as it's doing that. So these aren't huge files, they are 70 kilobytes a piece. Uh, okay, so while that's happening, um, what we're ultimately going to do is go into edit each one of these. Oops, sorry, that was my wrong way clip. Go back to my Mia Ham here. And now one of the things that might like get like trip you up is when you've created something, when you go in, you're like, I wanna edit this, I wanna edit this. When you open a wakelet, you're actually in the view mode. You're not in the ability to edit it. So you look when I hover over this right now, I'm not getting that, um, that pencil icon to edit it. I always, when I wanna jump back into a wakelet, I have to go to edit collection. And then that is going to allow me to go in and edit. So we are going to edit and replace the images that are in here. Uh, with these icon images that we want. And hopefully, oh my goodness, uh, I must have a really slow internet connection. Fortunately, I already have this folder yeah, on, my <laughs> on my desktop, so I don't know what's going on there. It's a little odd. Um, so I have to go in and edit and change the icon for each of these. 
So the way that I do that, once you've downloaded those icons to your desktop, is you click on Edit. And what we did before was change all this text, um, but I also have the ability to edit this image. And similar to the options that you had for the banner and the options that you had for the background, you have the ability to choose from the library, like choose from the Wakelet library, that Unsplash library, or you have the ability to upload your own image. So for these, we're going to be uploading our own images. So click on upload, and just as with anything else that you would upload, it's going to give you a screen to navigate to wherever you put those image files. Um, mine happened to be uh, in this folder here. And then once you've done this once, just so you know, you're not going to have to search for that place again, because everything that you upload until you choose a different destination, it's gonna go to this folder or to your desktop um, every single time. Um, because it just, it thinks, okay, you're, that, this is where you want to go because that first thing you uploaded, you went to this folder. So the next thing you try to upload, it's going to go straight to this folder. So we're in Quizlet, that's vocab. So I click on vocab. I don't know what just happened. Um, click on vocab and I go open. Oh, it hopped me over because the download was complete. So I'm sorry that you just missed that. That was a really weird thing. Um, I selected the vocab icon and it shows it in here. Now remember that, that uh, skill blocks thing that I, I had that where the skill blocks was like not right fit for the, the thumbnail? Um, that's what this allows you to do when you add any sort of image, you can sort of zoom it in or zoom it out to fit it. I have found when I'm adding images, I often have to like, I have to create a lot of white space around the image uh, before adding it. These icons, I've, I've made sure they are like perfect so that you don't have to do any adjusting of the size, you just need to upload and save. And so now that's in there, that looks good, all my text is correct, and this is now done. So now we're just going to go through the same thing for the next two features. I go to edit, and then I'm going to go to edit image, and I'm going to go to upload an image. And again, since I went to this folder last time, it's going to automatically assume I want to go there again. Now I'm going to add the reading icon and I click open. And then it's going to ask if I want to reposition it in any way. Um, I don't. So I'm just going to click save and then done. And now that's done. And then the final one is the comprehension check. I'm going to go to edit image. I'm going to upload an image again. And this is the quiz icon. Open and save. And if you're wondering where these icons come from, and I use a lot of these icons um, in presentations. Uh, so again, in the spirit of free, uh, these come from a website called The Noun Project. So they have icons um, for everything, nouns. Right, so um, you can type in sort of any word that you want, and there's going to be different icons that represent that. Now I have a paid version. So some of these websites that allow you to have free things. Um, in this case, if you don't have a paid version, you have access to all of the icons, but you have to like download it and it's got like a little image attribution, like the, the, the person who drew the icon um, is listed there. If you have a paid version, you have the ability to use those icons without um, the attribution. And so I've chosen to, um, to purchase that account for the organization because I use these icons so much. And uh, you know, the difference would be if I, if I didn't have a paid version, I, it would be the icon and then there'd be like small text giving attribution here. But um, I, that's what I'm using. So the Noun Project is a really cool site for icons such as this. And now that I've done all of these things, uh, I can click done and my wakelet is done. And so the last step that you're going to do, and remember, um, now actually I have to go through a couple steps here. I, in this, um, my visibility is private. So when I go to share, remember that I, I had created a second Mia Ham version. So I have to make sure that this collection is public. Um, and that's going to give me this share icon. But the other thing that you need to make sure that you do is make it copyable. Um, so I can't, and this is an annoying thing about Wakelet, I can't do that in this view. I have to actually go into the edit mode in order to adjust my settings to make it copyable. 
So um, that's one thing. Like to change the visibility, you could do it in edit mode or you can do it in view mode. To change the copy ability, you have to be in edit mode and go to settings. And then I'm gonna click done. So now I know this is copyable and this is shareable. And so to share this and to put the URL into the tracker, or then to share it with your students. Like maybe you're like, yay, I'm done, I did this, I can't wait to share a Wakelet with my students. Um, you go to share. And that's where you get the URL, but just like Quizlet and a number of other ed tech tools, you have the ability to share these in all sorts of different uh, ways. So you can you could share it as an assignment in Google Classroom, you can share it in Microsoft Teams, you can tweet it, you can share it via Remind or Facebook or Reddit. Um, you can export it as a PDF and it comes out really clean. Uh, you can embed it into a website and you can also generate a QR code. And the, the sort of, the notion of this is that, oh, maybe I, um, you know, I'm in a classroom and I want students to access this on their phone. So what it's doing right now is generating a, a huge QR code for me to um, have displayed on say a screen. But maybe you're creating a wakelet with a bunch of resources on a topic and students have a hard copy of like a worksheet that they're doing around that. Like, so say it's a um, thing on fractions, right? And maybe you've created a bunch of problems in a worksheet, or maybe your students can't remotely access much, they only have a phone, and so they need a worksheet um, to do it. But you could, uh, within that, copy this uh, QR code, paste that into the worksheet, and then so suddenly you have um, the ability to have the student do the worksheet, but then also access these resources. Or even with reading skills for today's adults, right? We took two of the things from that worksheet, the supplement, right? We took the comprehension questions and we took the vocabulary words. You could, you could download the supplement, you could uh, just get rid of the comprehension questions because we've done that, right? And then you could add the uh, QR code to that worksheet. So suddenly, students can be doing all of those exercises. They can be doing the vocabulary activities, they can be doing the grammar activity, they can be doing the speaking activity, they have the writing activities in there. And then you have a QR code that you've put into that supplement that links to the reading, that links to the Quizlet that they can do interactive practice. And then that links to that Google form so that students can actually take the quiz online and you're getting that information. So that's the cool thing about QR codes um, is that you can, you can make things that might be like hard copy um, uh, sort of mobile friendly. You can add mobile friendly resources to even hard copies. So do, 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 do. Are, I'm looking through questions. Google's downloading has been a little odd. Okay, thanks. Um, to access the image folders again, it's in the all about Wakelet Wakelet. So that Wakelet that I shared, it has the, um, it has the drive folder. And just so you know, um, the assignment that you're gonna get afterwards is here. I'll assign this to the rest of the group um, after this call. And uh, this Wakelet has the, um, the drive folder. I'm actually gonna add the icons uh, folder in here as well, just so people have that. So it's in the, it's in the all about Wakelet Wakelet. I'm gonna add it to the Google uh, guide or the crowded guide for Wakelet, and I'm also gonna add the folder in here. So uh, there'll be no shortage of, of places to find the images. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so just some last things, and I don't even know why I, like, why did I say these are 90 minutes? I'm sorry. <laughs> this has all been 115 minutes. Um, as normal, uh, this, slide deck goes through all sorts of um, different things about um, you know, the things that we've covered. It just provides visuals. This is information about sharing. Oh, sorry, so when we share uh, it, I'm gonna go to share the Wakelet. I'm gonna copy this URL, kind of similar to what it looked like in Quizlet um, and Google Forms actually. And then I'm gonna go to my tracker. Do, 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 do and I'm going to paste that in there. So now that Wakelet is done for me and him. Uh, so just some final steps, um, and I will promise to be less than five minutes on this. So 
Uh, I've updated all the examples, so you can go to any of these. These are all linked in the slide deck to see examples. And actually, you're in the spreadsheet, right? So you have that resource tracker. So any of the uh, wakelets at the top uh, in the few, first few rows, you can click on those. Those are sort of models that you can look at to see what they're, they should look like. I've been poking into the ones that folks have created who did Tuesday's training. They're all looking perfect, so um, I think that's awesome. Um, for downloading those images, here's that image again. So Nancy, I guess I, I, I figured people would have this question. So here's a link to that image folder also in the slides. So there's numerous places uh, where you can access those image files. Um, as always, again, there's the guide. Um, and this is where you're going to get that, that boiler, what's called boilerplate text that you're going to paste into um, your uh, wakelet for each of the three items that you're adding. So next week, same times and days in terms of the sequence, Monday from 4 to 5 Eastern, Wednesday from 11 to noon, will be uh, open uh, office hours if you want to ask any questions or have me like look at things. Um, past couple, I've, I like people asked me to look at their forms to make sure that they were correct. So it's a good time for that to happen. And then one of the things that I'm going to be sending out as a final assignment, um, there's going to be a few things is one, I'm gonna ask that everyone just take one, t one chance to make sure that you're checking all of your wakelets to make sure all of your links are actually going to the right things. Um, so that's gonna be one thing. Um, I'm gonna show you in a second, like I'm gonna ask people to categorize your stories and that's because uh, in addition to these wakelets, I'm actually gonna be using a tool that I've used for other things called Glide, which is an app builder. Uh, so there's going to be an app uh, of all of these things as well that it's not going to be the wakelets, but it's going to be a searchable library by level and by topic of stories so that students can say, hey, I want to see what stories there are for sports. Well, like if they do that, they're going to see the Mia Hamm and there's one on Kevin Garnett and there's a couple other ones. Uh, hey, I want to see ones on citizenship. Um, so in order for that to happen, we need to tag these stories to say what the sort of topics are. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then the third thing that I'm gonna ask you to just sort of think about, if you can, is one of the makers, uh, participants, uh, mentioned in his questions in the Google form, one of the questions referred back to the previous question. It was like question five, and it said, in your, like, uh, based on your answer to question four, da, 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 da. And what I realized in that moment was one, he was asking how to refer to that because we don't, um, we don't have question numbers in our forms. So he would say the previous question, but uh, that alerted me to a problem in the fact that in the Google Forms settings, I had set the settings to shuffle um, question order. So all of your quizzes uh, right now have this box when you go to settings in your forms uh, to be shuffled. And that's not a problem unless you had like two questions that one sort of asked a question about the previous question. Then that's a problem. Um, it's also kind of, you know, when, when we have reading comprehension quizzes, oftentimes they're scaffolded in terms of order of detail, right? Like it'll be like a main idea question and it asks like, how is this person feeling? And then there's a vocabulary question. Like that tends to be a standard sequence. So because this is checked off, it will always shuffle the order. And that's not a big deal. Um, and you don't have to do anything. If you know none of your uh, stories had a, a referential question, like where it said the, in the previous question, um, but if you do have a story where the questions uh, had something where it's referring back to the previous question, I'm gonna ask that you go into your Google Forms for that story and adjust the settings to check this off, like uh, turn it off so that it is unchecked, um, so that the questions will always appear in that order. So that's my bad, um, but not a big deal unless you um, had questions that um, had that sort of reference to another question. Uh, the other ask, and I'm actually gonna send this out as a separate assignment, so just, just so you know it's coming, is I've gone through all the stories and looked and thought about like what are the various topics across all of these stories. So these are the topics that I'm gonna ask you to categorize uh, your stories as. And in the tracker, if you've scrolled right, um, you may notice uh, that there are these things. So I just did Mia Ham, 
And so um, the categories are already fixed. So if I click on these, um, you're gonna see a scroll down thing of all of the different topics that um, you could put. You don't need to have three topics for each story. It could just be one, but I want you to have at least one if at all possible. So this was a biography on Mia Hamm. Uh, Mia Hamm is an athlete, so sports is one. And the story itself does get into sort of some of the character traits of like perseverance and her sort of, you know, fighting as a female soccer player for recognition of, of, of females, of, of women's soccer in the U.S. And so that's character. Um, and so these are the three things that I'm going to categorize this story as um, because all three of these elements have, uh, all three of these elements are sort of present as uh, being part of the story. Again, you don't need to have three topics for each of your stories. It just, they might not fit but try to at least have one um, so that in the app that we're gonna create, and you'll, you'll all get the app, um, it's free, um, students will be able to actually sort uh, the stories um, and search for stories based on topics. So um, that's the other thing. And then uh, just so you know, in September, there's gonna be a webinar that you're invited to come to where we're gonna showcase your work and we're gonna showcase um, the library that you've created and the app and all the wakelets um, and also be announcing the next EdTech Makerspace project. And I just also, as a part of that and leading up to it, I'm gonna ask that once we've got sort of all of these things collected, that you share this out and promote what you've done. Um, we have ultimately in a few weeks time now, uh, we'll have created 345 wakelets uh, and an app that has all of these really rich mobile friendly resources um, for students. And we wanna make sure that people are aware that this exists and is available for them to use. Um, and so, you know, between now and then and beyond, I, I want you to uh, hopefully be sharing out like what you've done. I'm gonna be providing some media resources um, for folks to share out about the EdTech Makerspace and about the library that you've created so that you can share it with your networks and your colleagues. Um, but, you know, I, I want to, um, like champion the work that everyone's done and and use this again as a project that also demonstrates like if we all collectively work together uh, we can do really cool things and and put some awesome content into the hands of learners and instructors so thank you for your time um, i will send out more obviously you'll all get more information about all of this um, because i've got you in my my hooks because you're in my class <laughs> um, so yes you'll definitely get all the information for all of these things but yeah, be on the lookout for that categorization assignment. Be on the lookout for um, a survey that will be anonymous. And also be on the lookout for sign up if you want to apply for one of the four positions to serve as a reviewer. Um, because uh, that will be something that starts up in, in a couple of weeks. So it'll be a very quick turnaround on that. Um, but we want to have everything kind of reviewed and ready by the time we do this webinar in September. So um, thank you so much. Uh, for your time. Uh, the application is going to be sent out. I have not I've sent it out yet. I will send that out as uh, as something in the Google Classroom. So you will all be alerted to it um, and you'll have a few days to um, apply. So <clears throat> any other questions? I know we've gone over as usual. It is time for lunch. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess that's it. And um, we'll be in touch. Maybe I'll see you next week during um, one of the open office hours, but uh, happy creating. If you have any questions, as usual, the assignment will come out in a second. This recording will be added to it, um, but use the stream within the assignment in the comments section if any questions come up. Um, and I think you've all done some super cool things already and, and supporting one another within the various streams. So thank you for doing that. Please continue to do so. And uh, I'm excited for you to all start creating wakelets. I love this tool and I think you're gonna love it too. All right, take care.